Hiya, my lovelies. Thank you so much for joining me today for a colour and chat. We're going to be colouring in Jasmine Beckett Griffith's first book, A Fantasy Art Adventure, using the 120 set of polychromos. And the page we're going to be colouring is called A Candle in the Dark. So I thought we would do something different today. Um, we're going to be colouring this Jasmine Beckett Griffith um, page called A Candle in the Dark. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm sorry guys, we're doing skin again because that is where I start on a page. Um, and that's purely because I find it most challenging and I just want to get it out of the way before I mess it up. Um, today we're using polychromos and yeah, let's begin. Um, we're starting off with cinnamon and let's see. So because of the candle, we uh, have a light source that I need to be careful and play with. Um... Yeah, I'm going to try something different. Don't know if it's going to work out, but we're going to give it a bash. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, so today is Friday. Um, and, okay, so I just lay this down basically where I think the shadows would go. And because these are oil pencils, don't even try and waste your time with heavy pressure you're just going to um damage the tooth of the paper um with very little pigment from the pencil with um oil pencils layering is the only way you're going to get more pigments out of the pencil um of course polychromos are like part of the best of the best and just absolutely amazing so they are already highly pigmented. So you don't need to use all that much pressure to get the um, pigment to lay down. Um, which is always awesome. Uh, you get to preserve the integrity of the tooth of the paper. Which is essential for layering um, many colours. Um, so yeah, I'm just laying this down where I think shadows would go but there is no right or wrong way guys to color it's just your interpretation it is just your interpretation what you are comfortable with sorry i like my paper to lay flat 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 um which is why i'm always pressing down and i don't like the oil or sweat or any residue from my pens uh, from my fingers to lay down on the paper so that's why i've always got something underneath my hand and why i wear the glove um so this is just going to be trying to figure out what her face is going to look like we're going to use the cinnamon just to give her face a little bit of a structure and once we know what that structure looks like we can start detailing and, you know, re-adding more colours and knowing where our highlights go and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but your shadows are what give your image um, depth and character. And then obviously your highlight is to create the contrast to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, the greater the contrast, the, I don't know, the more impressive and 3D-like your, your elements look on the page. Um, so we, we, very, very gently, guys, very, very gentle pressure. It just makes it so much easier to erase if you do make a mistake. And, uh, yeah, um, you manage to preserve the integrity of the tooth of the paper, um, enabling you to put more colours down, more colours, create more. Sorry, I live by train tracks. There are going to be trains coming past, and they can be noisy, really noisy. 
and I apologize for that noise but I'm not in a professional setup I'm recording from home and there are going to be interruptions so if that's going to annoy you um, perhaps turn the volume down <laughs> I'm sorry but uh, yeah this is all new and I am just embracing the experience and at the end of the day I'm not here to get subscribers I'm here to show you my techniques it was requested by a number of people lovely lovely kind wonderful people in the community and I thought well let me do it let's see what happens um, if I can help even just one person feel more confident in their coloring um, um, teach I don't know somebody something new not that I think I'm capable of teaching or I don't know or that I'm even experienced enough to be able to share or teach anybody anything um, it's just I just want to help um, those who have requested me to help them and recording what I'm doing is possibly the easiest way to do that um, I have tried to put down in writing many times um, how I do what I do and you know um, and what you, you know give advice and the whole thing but yeah, I, trying to describe where I'm laying the color down or what color I'm laying where can get rather tricky in just um, with just using words and writing. So yeah, um, I'm I'm a very shy person, so if I start to feel awkward or yeah, it's because I am um, I'm shy and this I feel very humbled that people want to learn from me but I also feel um, that I'm not I don't know not the not experienced enough to be able to even share this with um, with someone on video so I'm very grateful for for the overwhelming amazing support that I've received out there um, the coloring community is one like no other out there. It is unbelievable. You are all so kind, so thoughtful, um, so supportive, non-judgmental. You, I, I don't know, my people. <laughs> it's the only way I can put it. Um, uh, it's the only community I feel I can be myself in and... I don't know, um, it's fun and it's enjoyable and sorry about the lighting, I'm trying to improve it, like I say I don't have a professional setup, I'm just literally recording with my phone and a tiny little tripod, um, I would love to do uh, reviews and all of that kind of thing in time, um, I just feel that whatever is available out there already, there are so many reviews available. So what I can do is when I'm using a different medium, like today I'm using polychromos, I can give you my opinion on them and, uh, you know, give you what my experience with them are. Um, and if my English is all over the place, I apologize. I'm not really concentrating that hard on what I'm saying. I'm concentrating more on what I'm doing. Um, okay, so here her eyes get tricky and the nose is, oh, the nose, the nose, people. That, my lovelies, is the trickiest part for me. Um, because I find that the nose is where the most character comes from and, and it lays structure to the rest of her face. So we'll get there, very, very, very gentle layers when we get there. So with a crease in the eye, there's always a shadow there, obviously. Um, so I want to add a bit of shadow. We know that there's going to be there. Um, and on the lower lid, 
where the eyelashes are casting a shadow. Um, I try to keep the lower lid not too coloured purely because uh, if we want to lay makeup down we want to have um, the space to be able to do that and we don't want the tooth of the paper to um, go until we've actually done that and we don't want to lay too much color down so that we when we do lay makeup then it doesn't um, show up okay so here is where we have to do the guessing game of the nose um just forgive me if i'm quiet but i am literally just trying to figure out how this is going to work um because it's not a proper portrait we uh you know it doesn't have to look re super realistic but we do want her to still be rather pretty and um have a cute little button nose the way Jasmine in, um, intended her to look. So we just want to do a bit of a bridge of the nose here, give her a bit of a shape, gentle, gently, gently, gently. Um, we'll come put those proper shadows in a bit later, but if we have a bit of a shape, we know what we are dealing with. Um, I'm going to do her nose like that for now. And then this side, so, whoops. Okay, we want it to go there. You see, that is why we do very gentle layers. You can hardly even see where I went wrong there. And we can easily, easily, easily fix it. Okay, trying to figure this out. Okay, so that's not looking too good. This is when I get my eraser. I'm using my little Tihu, my little Tihu pink beautiful eraser. So cute. I love this little guy. So pretty as well. Okay, so let's just erase this and start again. So for the noise, it makes the funniest little noises. Okay. Oh, I need my brush. So I don't. I flick with my hand the whole time. I apologize if that annoys you. Um, where is my brush? All right. There we go. That's better. All right. Let's try this again, shall we? So we want. It to go. Okay. Like that. Still not quite right, eh? Sorry. This is what you have to do. You just have to trial and error it until you are happy. So, let's start this side and work our way in. We know this is going to be in shadow quite a bit because although the candle is coming from this side, so maybe not all that much. All right, let's do this. Noses are so tricky. Okay, and they've got to have some sense of symmetry. And that is why I don't draw, because I'm not very good with achieving that symmetry. Okay, you know what? We can fiddle when we come with our darker pencils and get the... Oh, I don't like that at all. Nope. Okay, I need use a very soft part of your pencil, okay? Okay. 
right side from client, I am concentrating as you can see it is desperately needed. I don't want that line. More for a guide. Mm. See, so the minute you start messing around with the tooth of the paper, it um, you see the how the pencil lay down changes. So. Yeah, you um you need to be careful with that. Let's see. So this guy is amazing. Because it is so gentle. So so gentle. Let's get rid of that harsh line. I want it to be very, very subtle. Alright, so let's try this again. Oh, that's a bit better. All right, so like I said, I'm not a professional in any shape or form. Literally winging it. Lots of erasing, trying again until, yeah, until I'm happy with the outcome. And it's... <laughs> I mean, it being perfect, is it's a very rare thing. Um, and perfection is not what we're aiming for. We are aiming for having fun and expression and escaping to a fantasy world that is filled with color and happiness and acceptance. Um... I don't know. This is not working for me. Do you know what? I'm going to move on. And when we come to the shadowing with the darker colors, we shall sort that out. Um, I don't want to do... Uh, I don't want to ruin the paper. Or damage the paper. Alright, so here's the crease of the R. Again, we need a bit of a shadow here. I'm always intrigued by the way people um, color jasmines work. The face shapes that they give her beautiful girls. Um, it's just always interesting. It's, her illustrations are so very open for interpretation. Um, and you've kind of got like creative freedom with them. It's beautiful and fun and intimidating, no doubt. Intimidating, especially if you're not a professional. It's just like, well, winging it, hoping you don't mess this beautiful illustration up. Um, guesswork, but it always works out to be something stunning because you had a beautiful base to start with. Um, okay. Now we're going to get to her little cheeks and stuff. I'm going to give her some sort of face structure. Make her, I don't know, a little supermodelish like. So I like to give my girls cheeks. And that's when I come in here. And just give her a little bit of shape to her face. Um, okay, that'll do for now, for there. Just an idea of where we're going to put those shadows in. I hope you can see, I know it's very light. But it's just because we're fiddling and guessing. Alright. And over here. Oh, she's so cute. Um... Alright, chins get tricky as well. Oh my days. 
All right, and we've got to put a bit of like shadow down here. Let's just draw in her little nostril and draw in her little nostril there and here and here. And we're going to put a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And then, of course, we've got this this little indent dude that happens here. And there we go. Okay, so we're giving her a cheek. So I think we have come out a bit far here. We want to go back in a bit with this and put her cheek back. Um, and when you're raising, be very, very gentle because you don't want to take away any of the tooth of that paper. Oh my word, this nose is just not coming out right. I don't know. Sorry about the trains, guys. Okay. All right, let's do her cheek this side. We have an idea of where it's going to go and here okay there we go it's a pity we can't live stream before we've got a thousand subscribers because I'd be more interested in knowing what it is that you want to see and what it is that you battle with what it is that you need guidance with you know and just to chat with you obviously just for the company of it in the meantime we are just going to give this a go okay I don't know. all right this way for her cheeks yeah and then we need to do this little chin guy. Okay, we can put down quite a bit more colour here. And the way I add more colour is to just go over it and over and over. As opposed to putting um, hard pressure. You can see I'll hold my pencil as far back as I possibly can. So that I don't add too much pressure. Um... Only when I want to burnish, which is very rare. I try to not burnish. By the time I've done all my layers on, it's already kind of burnished itself because of the amount of layers that I use. Um, and that's that's just the way I do things, guys. It doesn't mean it's the right way, the wrong way, or anything like that. It's just my way. It's what I feel comfortable with. And... Um, yeah, it's just I want to be able to easily correct any mistakes I happen to make. And the only way to do that is by, um, yeah, with very light, gentle um, pressure and many, many layers. Okay. All right. And then we've got to kind of put her forehead in here, but I don't know. Here we'll have a bit of a shadow of sorts. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Okay. We can actually do it from about here. It's just a small nose area that we have to um, deal with. Okay. Highlights. All right, I think uh, we need to do her little chin area here. Let's just be very gentle. So now with polychromos, because they're a harder pencil than, say, your um, Prismacolor, 
they can get scratchy at times try to avoid that scratchy area because that scratchy area leaves scratchy pigments and you don't get a smooth lay down um, you need to find what I call the sweet spots and um, it's it's like the it's like flattens and it becomes so smooth and easy to use in that area okay so under her chin here we want definitely a shadow a decent amount of shadow to give her a little face all right and we will carry on with that more so now we just keep on adding in here so according to jasmine beckett griffith's description she has got blonde hair and she is a gothling fairy with bat wings um and black boots so that helps us with colors and apparently her eyes are brimming with tears uh we'll see about that we'll see if we can build that into the character um you know i want it to be yeah i don't want to go and mess up with with special effects so i'd rather have a very pretty image and have fun creating it all right her tear ducts need a bit of color as well so we start off and down here with her eyes there we go although i'd imagine she's probably sorry about the train okay i'd imagine that she's being a goth, she's wearing very dark makeup. Um, okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more color now. Uh, to, and like I said, to add more color, just layer up more. You just gentle, gentle, more layers and layers. And that will then start deciding where you'll have more shadow. Um... In your shadow areas than other parts okay let's just see. so what have you guys got planned for the weekend it's guy fox and as pretty as the fireworks are and kids love them and they're so beautiful to look at my heart aches for the animals oh. so I've immigrated here recently, when I say here, I mean to the UK, recently from South Africa. Um, and we had many, many, many pets in South Africa. Um, unfortunately, we have we were not able to bring them with us. Um, but they've gone to loving homes and uh, they're okay. So, with that said, the when we had pets oh the fear and terror that those poor animals would go through from the, from fireworks it just it's so upsetting to see and um anybody who has pets i'm sure will understand what i'm talking about and you know i think about the poor wildlife out there I as well if if our domestic animals inside are so terrified the poor wildlife uh, it must be really frightening for them. Um, shame. Yeah, I just... Surely, with the technology we have in today's times, there's a better way of celebrating Guy Fox than with all that pollution and noise and... Yeah. You know, just something that's a little bit more environment friendly Her face is going to be quite dark. She's in a cave and she's got a candle, which is her light source. 
I'd imagine it's very dark in there. So, yeah, it's going to take many layers to build this up um, to give her enough shadow. Um, so I'm just going with the cinnamon over and over to build that color up. And while doing that, enhancing the structure of her face and working out where everything goes without getting too dark with the shadow areas. She's so pretty. And then the highlights, you know, will have your orange. Well, I'm not sure about orange, but more like a yellow. You want to have a bit of a glow from the candle in the highlight. Make it interesting. I love Jasmine Beckett Griffith's books. They are such exceptional quality. Probably the best quality paper um, I've ever colored on. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Worth every penny. Um, it's, yeah, I find her, her illustrations absolutely exquisite. They're always beautiful. Um, and then to be able to put color to her gorgeous works is truly a privilege. Um, and then she gives it to us in this book with this ivory, beautiful ivory paper that you can use any mediums on. Um, perfect for pencil work. Um, yeah, it's just uh, exceptional, exceptional quality. So, yeah, they're a little bit pricier than your, I don't know, your, I'm trying to think of a, you know, like a Kirby book, for example. But that's because of the quality that you're getting. Um, the, this, like I said, the paper is just astoundingly um, brilliant. And you just go around and around and around. Oil pencils. You need patience to use them. But they are so awesome to use. Um, and the Polychromo set for me, I really love their skin tone colors. They're easy to use, easy to come up with combinations that work really well make beautiful skin tones um, and then you can obviously layer for days with them so you can just keep adding color until you're totally happy with the color saturation and what it is that you're hoping to achieve polychromos have been a favorite of mine for the longest time. Now, I've been coloring for about, I don't know, must be six years, ma. So going on to seven years, crazy. Um, going on to almost seven years, um, uh, I, I started coloring when my youngest child um, was born shortly after that, and that was 2015. Crazy how time flies, guys. All right, um, I'm quite happy with that for now. I'm going to move on to the next color. There we go. I think that's a bit better. All right, so 
yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, rich, warm color that I like to use in the shadow areas. And it's very, very close to the cinnamon. It's just a, like a darker, darker color to add in the shadows. So where her very thick, luscious eyelashes are, quite a bit of shadow is going to be cast there. So uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be quite a bit darker in that section. Um, and like I say, gentle, gentle layers softly softly you'll see that i also rotate my pencil all the time that's to keep the point sharp um it's just easier to with with a sharp point you can get into the nitty gritty areas and get as close up to that black line as possible so you don't leave a gap I don't like to leave a gap, let's just put it that way. It's my way of doing things. I like to get up close into those black lines as possible. Um, okay. So, um, my lovelies, I am a very slow colorist. I, I've been saying that for years, especially when I do my posts. Um, and this is why it takes many, many layers to get color built up and get the pigment laid down. Um, and I don't like to rush the process. Um, when I do rush, I become bored. And um, I'm never happy with the outcome. So I'll rather take my time, enjoy the process. Um, the, uh, coloring is not a race. It's, um, well, for me, it isn't about how many illustrations are complete. It's uh, more about how it looks in the end and that I had fun doing it. And, you know, knowing that I tried my best. Um, I'm somebody who uh, needs validation. Um, and not always from others, I, I need to look at what I've created and feel the validation, feel that sense of achievement. Um, this is my, I don't know, it's, it's the one place where I can be myself with um, raw integrity and yeah, I just, I want to be proud of what it is that I create. And if it takes me three, four, five, six months to create, I don't care. It's it's as long as I know I did my best and that I'm happy with the outcome. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how you do it and what your aim is what it is that you want to achieve i know there's a lot of colorists out there who you know the goal is to complete as many pages as they want um and that's that's for them and i have no issue with that at all as long as everyone is just having fun and you're feeling good while doing it and it brings you joy and peace and serenity and makes you feel whole you know Okay, so as you can see, I am just pretty much going over the places where I laid down the cinnamon um, because that gave me an idea of where I'm going to add my shadows. So the Kaput Mortem now becomes my first shadow layer um, as such. And we are now adding proper structure to her face now and it will just it will get darker and we'll build it up slowly and like I say because she's in the dark it will be um, quite a dark shadowy face that we're wanting to um, accomplish here I have never done this before so it's completely completely new to me um, We'll figure it out together, guys. 
I can't promise it's going to work and I might cry at the end of it <laughs> but let's try and uh, see if we can learn something new um, hopefully by going gently gently and slowly slowly we can achieve what it is that we are hoping to achieve um, here we go with the tricky nose again this is where we need to now be very careful and slowly add in the shadow so instead of pressing hard I'll just go very gently and I'll just keep going over the same areas particularly where I'm wanting the shadow to be darker I just keep going over that area more often than the other areas and that should automatically make it darker to the rest So my oldest son is going on his first youth camp this weekend. I hope he has fun and enjoys it. He has done such a, an amazing job at settling into a new country and making new friends and just embracing the change and being so brave through the whole process. Um, I'm so proud of him. And he's... Oh, He's 11, so he's got all that other stuff that goes on with it. And he's just started high school. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of him. There will be times where I'm going to record and they'll be around. But at the moment they're in school, so... I am... Uh, yeah, it's just me at home at the moment. Trying to squeeze a bit of colouring in, and I thought, well, let's do a colour and chat. Something new on my channel. Don't know if you're going to like it or not. <laughs> you might find me incredibly boring. You know, if you do, I apologise. I'm just trying something new. Um, uh, colouring is a passion of mine. It's if I could, I think there are so many colourists who say this, but if I could earn an income just doing this, I would be the happiest person on the planet. Um, it would be, yeah, it would be a dream come true. All right, so this side is quite done. It's just going to be very dark, but it's fine. We don't want to put too much of this down either because we're going to need the tooth of the paper to take our very, very darker colors when we get there. Um... She's looking a little funny now, isn't she? A bit of alien-like, anyway. Uh, let's go up here. We'll go to the other side now. And just hold your pencil as far back as possible. Yeah, I know I'm colouring in over the, the eyebrows, but um, I do that because I'm going to be doing giving her like uh, proper eyebrows. And... You need the skin tone underneath it. Um, otherwise, it's just so very stark against the eyebrow, eyebrow color. Uh, we're going to go in here. Obviously, this is quite shadowed as well because of the hair. Um, So when I come closer to the pencil, it's not to increase the pressure. It is to be more precise with where I'm laying the color down. Um, I don't want to go into the other areas, especially if her hair is going to be light. Um, yeah. I don't want this color getting in there. So the thing about, oops, don't like that, it will blend out, 
So it's not a big deal. But uh, yeah. Okay. So the thing about the chains for me, I absolutely love them. In South Africa, we don't have trains, tubes, or buses that are usable and safe to use. Um, in yeah, in the country, it's it's dangerous in South Africa. So to be sitting here in my room recording this and. To be able to see a train come past and it's clean and it's working and it's safe and it's just a reminder to me of how privileged I am to be here in the UK and it's a reminder of where I've come from and where we are now and it gives me so, so many reasons to be grateful and thankful for where we are um, it's a reminder and sometimes a necessary one um, we used to having warm weather all the time the coldest it really gets um, during the day a winter day in South Africa where we were living would be like 18 15 degrees 16 degrees celsius and that would be freezing i would be like oh the coldest day ever it's cold fronts bring the heaters out and the whole thing so um when it gets really really cold and it's those rainy gloomy days in the uk i need something to remind me why we're here okay so don't worry about this yeah we'll just erase it um, to remind me why we're here and why we made the move and what it is that we need to be grateful for. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I love the sound. I love it. I love seeing the train. I love seeing all the people on it. I love the hustle and bustle about it. Um, and it reminds me of what it's like to be on them because the trains here are amazing um yeah so they're part of my happiness so yeah they're noisy but they make me happy um, i hope you understand what i'm saying uh yeah it's, uh, it's a very special sound to my family and myself. Okay, here we get to this very tricky part again. Okay, I, don't, I just don't know why I can't get this right. All right, uh, let's come here. It's a little easier. Another thing that is absolutely amazing about being here is how this um, heating in all the homes to cope um, with the cold winters we have here, or the cold weather that you have here in the UK. It's, um, it's amazing. Uh, and I feel so like I'm in a world of luxury when I've got the heating on. Um, to have it available is amazing.
But I care if it looked a bit scruffy and like uh, um, many say the ugly duckling face. It's okay because it all blends out in the end. You're just laying down base. Base colours to get an idea of what she's going to look like. Working out where your um, shadows and highlights are going to be. So don't worry too much about making it 100% perfect. It's just... Yeah, we, um, it all blends out in the end. As long as you keep very gentle layers so that it can be easily covered over by the next layer and makes it more cohesive okay above her eyebrow we'll have a bit of a shadow just gently this will all get darker as the layers build up Um, I'm going to leave this area for now and as we work inwards we'll figure out where the shadows will go and all of that. We work from the outside in. I'm getting... Okay, so this side will be darker than this side because this is the side that the candle light is shining. Alright, I think we're done. Um, also, don't like to leave like a line. I wanted to have it as smooth a transition as possible. So I try to very gently fade it out. Okay. And that's that with Caput Mortem. Okay, we're going to now go on to uh, Caput Mortem Violet. Alright, I'm going to darken up those shadows now. Because it's like a darker version of the Caput Mortem. And, yeah. and then from this, we're going to put down because we'll have an idea of the structure of her face now, we can put down our, finish off our base colours um, by just blending it all out. And then we can start darkening up the shadows and adding all the detailing in and making her look like a masterpiece, hopefully. Uh, all just a guessing game so like here I'm not increasing my pressure I'm just being a little bit more precise about where I'm putting it because I don't want to put it too far just yet um, yeah we'll add shadow for sure a lot of it but this is just for structure, this is not for detailing yet. So we want to be careful. We don't want to go and distort her um, features, her facial features. So. Please let me know in the comments what you prefer. Look, it's obviously easier to record um, chatting with people. You don't run out of topics to talk about. It's conversation. It's easy to flow. When you're sitting here on your own and you're new to this, it's, it's rather challenging to find, um, I don't know, things to ramble on about. Also, the, the in, interests I have are, I don't know, <laughs> don't know if you'll be interested in them or not um i enjoy true crime a lot uh, i can talk about that for days 
but I don't know if that would be too macabre for for you and if it's not something you'd want to hear <laughs> whilst coloring so let me know please in the comments uh, topics you do enjoy um, or you don't mind being spoken about uh, during a color and chat um, do you want to know more about me and my lifestyle and my children uh, our life in South Africa our life here in the UK I can tell you all about that um, yeah just I don't want to bore you it's the last thing I want to do is bore you um, or be come across as self-obsessed by only talking about myself so yeah I don't know tell me what it is that you want to see on my channel what you want to hear on my channel um, do you prefer this or do you prefer the music you tell me and we figure it out together so that you're happy with my content and you enjoy you see what's happening here now with the paper because we erased and all of that oh but if we do that that seems to smooth it out a bit better that's a bit better I don't like those lumpy lumpies that was not nice just rub it a bit okay yeah I'm, I'm genuinely interested uh, I well I want to know what it is that you're interested in. Um, I care, I genuinely do care. And I'm someone who, who tries to be very supportive. If I go off the grid, I'm battling with something. It's not all the time. Um, I try to not go off the grid. But if I go a bit quiet, that just means I'm battling or I'm really busy with something new, trying to work out a new routine, whatever it is. Um, but most of the time I try to be supportive, be present, be considerate and mindful of the fact that people are going through many difficulties which we don't know about people don't share the fact that they're struggling i don't know it's like society has put this negative stigma to it and that we all need to just be coping perfectly in this crazy world um but i'm i'm a realist i don't expect that at all i would rather have honesty and no what is really going on with you I genuinely do care I genuinely am interested uh, it's not to earn brownie or popular points or anything like that I was just I'm interested and I care I want people to be happy I want people to be content in their worlds um, and even though I want that, it doesn't mean I don't want to hear about the struggles that you're experiencing. I just want to be able to be given the opportunity to support you through the troubles that you may be experiencing. That's all. I don't want you to feel alone. Um, that's just, there are just too many people going through stuff on their own and it's not necessary. Um, there are so many of us who want to be part of your lives to offer support nothing else no hidden agenda no um, expectation of any kind it's just purely because we care all right we're trying to add a bit of detail to her nose now this gets trickier and trickier So please feel free, uh, feel free to reach out to me on social media. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. Um, and I've met the most phenomenal 
inspiring people on Instagram. I have never in my life come across such wonderful, kind people. So generous, so considerate, so loving and kind. And I'm blown away, absolutely blown away. And my lovelies, my special, special angel lovelies, you know who you are. Um, I am so incredibly grateful to have met you. I say in inverted commas, because um, there's still the day that I hope to be able to meet you in the flesh. But you are part of my everyday thoughts. Um, and I don't know how I lived without you before. You are truly special, amazing people who have made my world and my life so much better and brighter since you've come into it. And um, yeah, a huge thank you to you guys. You know who you are. Um, and then there is our new... You know, the, the new people that I get to meet on a daily basis on there as well. You guys are just all so wonderful. Um, and your the talent and skill that is out there, just it, it makes my day. It makes me a happy person to see such beautiful work, so many different styles. I'm, I'm totally intrigued and yeah um, entertained I mean it keeps me busy scrolling through all the beautiful pages that are created out there um, and I am always just so blown away by what people are able to create um, it's yeah truly inspiring and then my special lovelies are the ones who inspire me to be a better person on a daily basis. I don't always succeed and I do get grumpy. But every day you do inspire me to want to be better. And for that I'm grateful because for that it makes me a better mom. And a bit of everything um, yeah so thank you for being part of my life and for becoming such um, important friends in my world so I'm not happy with that I don't want to line okay I'm getting a tickle in my throat. I don't know, that hasn't really rubbed out, has it? Oh dear. It's fine, it will go, it will fade as we add. Okay, on the side. Do you also do that where you <clears throat> feel quite social and then there's parts where you just, it's intense concentration um, and because the paper is not so smooth here, not so nice, not accepting the pigment so nicely, it just requires extra concentration there. Okay. 
excuse me for sniffing. I just sneezed earlier. And now it's got me sniffing. Here comes another train. <laughs> it warms my heart. Love it. In the mornings when I wake up extra early, now I have a few extra minutes on my schedule, I um, I'll make some coffee and then I'll go and stand out on my little balcony and watch the train come past and see all the people in their beautiful work clothes and their coats and all cozy on their way to... I don't know, start their busy days and their busy lives. Um, yeah, I feel like it makes me feel a part of something. It's, um, I love it. Okay, so it's just, I just want a little bit of shadow here. Very, very, very gently. Um, to create contour on her face. But not because of the candle. It's not going to be so dark this side. That side's going to be way darker. So I'm just going to very gently here add. So on this side, it's more for for um. What's the word? Um, developing her features. And on this side, it's more for contrast. So as we add more colors in um, and we start de detailing the features and that kind of thing, it will um, we'll then start developing the highlights and the differences two sides. At the moment we're just trying to work out what she looks like. I'm just start darkening up this side now. Taking less lights. We don't want to lose her. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. We don't want to lose her facial features in the process, so we're just darkening up where we've laid the shadow down and adding shadow to the highlighted area. But the way we do that is to just add more layers into the shadowed area and or the darker areas. Just more and more layers, more and more layers. And where the highlighted area is, we just add very, very gentle, soft layers. So it fades out in that area. So we keep the highlight, 
but it will still be dark um, lighter than the rest and darker than the side so we keep her cheeks and all of that but the shadow will be a lot more intense on the side For me, all the details are important. I try to keep as much of the detail as I possibly can. And yes, I know she's a little cartoon-ish looking character who doesn't have to look super realistic. I know. But I do like to um, I do like to still give her the same amount of attention to detail as I would a portrait. And I still want it to look really epic at the end. I don't know if I'll, I'll achieve that. But I've got to keep trying. So you've got to keep your pencil rather sharp. I'm going to quickly sharpen this. I'll be back now. Okay, sorry, my sharpener is very loud. Okay, so we... Where was I? Oh, I was doing her eye. And that's why you need a sharp pencil. Do you see the difference there? Because now you can get in there, into those grooves, with the lightest of pressure. It makes all the difference. You can lay so much more pigment down without hard pressure because you're able to get in right in there and you're now layering on a specific detail as opposed to not as opposed to a very large area which then adds well you can bold your color up now see how much better that is so now that my pencil sharp really get in there and build it up so I want it to be darkest in the crease and I want it to lighten up so I'll do less layers on the outside and more layers on the inside I'm not pressing any harder I'm just doing more layers
So we're just going to finish off with the Kaput Morton Violet and we're going to leave it here for today. I've got to dash off and go fetch my kitties from school. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. This is what we've achieved today. If you'd like to see more of her coloured on camera, please let me know in the comments and I'm more than happy to do so. Um, we can continue it as a colour and chat if you'd like. Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, please kindly give it a thumbs up and all feedback is welcome. And I really appreciate all the kind um, comments that have been left on my videos. Thank you so much for all the amazing support. I really, really appreciate it.